Hello and welcome to round three of Low Ink August 2024, day one. I am here yet again with Pat, and we are going to be watching the Pastel Cartel versus the Shadow Ancients. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's the jewel of the, the shades, I guess. It's the Pastel versus the Shadow. <laughs> we'll see how these teams are able to do uh, as we are getting all in the lobby. We will start this round on Tower Control on Ship Shape Cargo Company. Very nice way to, to start the game. I mean, it's all about finding control over that tower. It's pretty rough to get out of mid, especially with these checkpoints. These checkpoints are among the longest in the game. You have to stay on the tower for 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, on that first checkpoint, but once you are past that, things can snowball incredibly fast. So getting that first checkpoint, st standing that control is going to be very, very important for these two teams. Yes, and um, I'm very uh, also excited. I mean, of course, Tar Control Ship Shape, interesting map, but mm -hmm. you got to understand, it's not Rainmaker. So that's what I'm interested in, because that's the best mode in the game. So I'm very hyped for Rainmaker Humpback Fun Track. Hey, I mean, I mean, if you like fast plays, if you like to see risk, if you like to see lots of uh, bombs going left and right, Rainmaker will be nice. But we will start with tower control, whether you like it or, you, or not, Serena. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate that, that all tournaments aren't only Rainmaker. Yeah, really we, we'll, we'll have a, a Rainmaker only tournament soon, I'm, I'm sure, just for you. Someday, yeah. Um, but we will be seeing an E leader on this map. Mm -hmm. e uh, the red E, the custom E leader, if I'm not wrong, the Kraken yeah. one, which is going to be very exciting to watch. Also, a junior instead of a Zap, so they will not be having any cooler options mm -hmm. with two fairly standard. Um, uh, other weapons in Dooley and uh, Slosher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Oh, we do see, moving on to um, this side, uh, yep. we will be seeing a more traditional comp with Cooler and Dooley's and Range Blaster and mm -hmm. Shot here. Um, and it's seeming to work out as they are moving up a bit early. Mm -hmm. Finding picks and um, uh, able to continue coming back with the cooler that they have. Yeah, the Shadow Ancient still having control over mid as the Pastel Cartel are uh, still fighting their way in, still fighting their way to the tower. But now with the pick onto the shot, there is their turn to get on top, to get onto mid. Tactical is deployed on the side of the Shadows as they have to jump away. Oh wait, lots of fights happening left and right. Bastels are still in control of me despite losing a whole bunch of players. They were able to keep that position, force the shadows away. That means they still have control over the tower as the shadow ancients are still struggling to stay there. The editor is keeping them away as the pencil has to move out now. The Shadow Ancients are on the, the tower, uh, the Bastard Counter. Yeah, and we see uh, Kevin um, go for a pick on this crab. The Ghoulies do end up trading, and it is this bucket left to hold on to this top right uh, area here. And it seems like they are going to be able to do that fighting the range here, forcing them to pop Kraken, but with that very same Kraken being picked off here, and three will go down on the side of um, Pastel Cartel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a bit more fight in there as the Shadow Ancients now in control of the checkpoint are looking to clear it. There's, that bomb is not going to be enough, and now it's when things get incredibly dangerous for the Pastels. The tower is looking like it's about to run away, but the Pastel Cartel defending that tower, surrounding it completely and keeping it from snowballing across the 
support. Pastel Castle are back on the tower and now with the fight, with the specials, they're able to get to the checkpoint themselves. Two minutes left in the game, Serena. We will see if the Pastels are able to get the checkpoint. Yeah, and they do see the whole tower here, finding picks left and right, just able to keep the space, clearing the checkpoint, taking the lead, and now with this push the Julie has, trying to find a pick, but sane -san will shut it down there, and, um, the, and the Junior and the Bucket are just left to fend for themselves. Hey, that's the end of that push, but the Pastel Cartel can be pretty happy. They got the lead right there, now it's on the Shadow, the Shadow Suit to move forward to get the splats, they get one thanks to the Kraken, right now the fight is not over as the Shadow Ancients are back on top of the tower. There's no checkpoint now. One mistake and things screwed and very fast as the Bastard Cartel is still defending, is still keeping the tower coming, get, getting it back into mid and with two down onto the shadows, they are, are back in attack mode. One minute left and the Bastards are in control. Very nice night. Yes, and we do see this E-Leader putting on pressure as you mentioned earlier with these snipes that they're getting. They do have Kraken to pull a tower if need be, but they seem to be using it aggressively and it's working out, able to support the Junior in their fight. And now they get yet another push instead of trying to save up specials for um, Shadow Ancient's push. They are trying to push on their own to stall them just a little bit here, but it seems like that push will very quickly falter. And yep. Shadow Ancients will be able to push up as the TV um, moves in with that Kraken. No. But with just 15 seconds left, the Shadow Ancients are in complete disarray. It's just the shot dancing on the map. It's, uh, on the tower, it's not going to be enough. But still are in control right now. And that Eater is just sealing the deal with all the specials on the tower. That's game number one for the Bastel Carter. And now we will be moving on to Rainmaker, Humpback, Humpjack. I do have a lot to say about this map mode. I mean, I, I, I'm all ears. It's, it's, it's Rainmaker, don't blink. And uh, there, there's always so much you can do, Serena. Well, how, how do you like to yes. play on this map? Um, a lot of people call this um, a place to spam bombs onto the elbow mm -hmm. area whenever a checkpoint gets taken and say it's very stally but i think that that's a very narrow-minded point of view to have because <laughs> there's very there's a lot of strategy that goes into charging up curling bombs and where to play suction bombs so mm -hmm. i i do think that there this map is absolutely flawless and there's nothing wrong with it ever. <laughs> um, but in uh, uh, in other aspects, I will say in mid, it is very entertaining to see fights as mm -hmm. buckets are very strong here. But yeah. no, but even with that uh, advantage that the weapon class has, just of how the map work on how the map works, um, it does not stop them from getting beaten by a a shark that can just easily surprise you. So it's always very entertaining to watch. Yeah, as you say, that elbow, and it, it, it's not about the bomb you throw, it's about where you put that bomb, and that elbow, how you put the, your bomb onto the elbow, can can completely stop a push in its track, or on the other hand, can completely wide the opponent, allow you to get onto the street, allow you to move forward in. We'll see how these teams adapt. I feel like Pastel Cartel, they probably not the best maps for the editor, not the best map mode for it. We'll see if they adapt, if they change the way they play. I mean, th these two teams were pretty even. They broke the same checkpoint, they had the same ground, and ooh, it looks like the Pastel are ditching the backline. Meanwhile, <laughs> the Shadow Ancients are bringing a ballpoint platling to the mix. That uh, ballpoint, or oh, with the good. Uh, Good jetpack that you can get on this map you can apply a lot of pressure from the safe position i can't wait to see how it works 
Yeah, and we do see how um, well string coming out can mm -hmm. uh, really shift the game here because this is a backline that can always apply so much pressure, make it feel so impossible to approach. People, oh, mm. but the well string isn't very important if you can't even stop yourself from going three down, mm. almost going four down, almost giving the junior a quad as this ball point is left to fend for themselves and they just can't do it but they will not be able to claim checkpoint regardless just because the tri slasher was able to stop them oh, oh what an opening by the bastard to them the double with a single bomb, the Bastel Cartel just going in, we're gonna get a KO! What? And that's Game. the beauty of Rainmaker, you never know what to expect, and games can last much, much shorter than any other mode. <laughs> you always on your toes, always leading to something entertaining. Wow, what? I mean... Every, everything done perfectly by the Bastion Cartel here. Getting the good opening, getting through, and getting splat after splat, and in the end, after pushing through the checkpoint, simply getting more splats, snowballing things. Right now, it feels like the Shadow Ancients need to put themselves in control, need to get their head back in the game. Going into Hagglefish Market, that's going to be a rough one. Yeah, and of course, the E-Leader, which worked so well earlier, um, mm -hmm. we may see a return because of how unbelievably strong just long ranges uh, on that little canopy that you have uh, for snipers to go on. Mm -hmm. So I do think that this will be very hard for Shadow Ancients to try and win on, but yeah. we can only see. Yeah, I mean, in, in that game number one, we saw that the Shadow Ancients were able to take some ground, were able to, to fight it out a bit. It, they, they need to not let themselves be down from that previous game it's rainmaker it can happen you miss one push you get wiped once and this is what happens right now the pastel cartel all they need to do is seal the deal and as you said with an elite uh, above the zone you can get a lot of control we'll see if they're able to if they bring back the elite and if they're able to do exactly that last chance for the shadow ancients to take a game off of them Pastel Cartel yeah. bringing back the no backline and Shadow Enchant, it's their, it's their turn to have a... Uh, well, they're, they're bringing back the pencil again. Yeah, and I really was not expecting uh, a Wellstring on this map mm -hmm. um, because it's just... Uh, it doesn't really have the range that Chargers have here. It doesn't have the paint that mm -hmm. Chargers have here. But, of course, it can still be a problem making it really hard to approach and um, oh. with the junior's support of bombs, it's always hard for the enemy to get mm -hmm. anything done as Shadow Ancients have another tragic loss of a member mm -hmm. to uh, a junior's bomb once more as Wellstring showcases its strength, mm -hmm. shredding that crowd. The Fazer Cartel getting more and more flats right there. They are in full control and they have a wipe out. It's now last chance for the Shadow Ancient. They need to get that next push and they don't have any specials to do so. That's going to be a rough one, but they only have 15 ticks to get in. The Sloshers just traded and oh, one more down onto the Shadows. That's going to be game. Number three going to the Bastille Cartel for control. They, they took game one to really learn how to fight the Shadow Ancients and then game two and three were absolute dominance. It Bastille Cartel completely in the Shadow Ancients head right there. Yeah, and we will um, see. Uh, I do hope that we see more of the pastel cartel later on mm -hmm. in day two of course because watching good good junior player good junior play like that 
is so few and mm-hmm. far between how much more popular things like Splatter Shot and and Zap are. So uh very, very um very, very nice to see 